You're probably working a job right now, one that you got from the degree that you studied for in university, you probably don't have much in savings, your living expenses seem ridiculously high, you feel as though you're not paid enough, you have credit card debt that needs taken care of. Maybe you're a student, studying for a degree that you hope can land you a job, that you hope can bring in some good money. You probably don't have any savings, only a pesky student debt hanging above your head. Now I won't lie to you starters, when I graduated my masters, it was truly something special for me. I know a lot of you can relate, particularly with this moment. Praise the Lord! Hallelujah! Amen! Oh. Allah, 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 Allah. Praise Praise Lord. Lord. Amen! Today, I want us to ask a very simple but pertinent question. And the question is simply this. Is college a waste of time in today's world? Thank you, Simon. At the same time, I want us to hear from very prominent members of society from first world countries that will give their views in relation to whether university is worth it or not, or whether it's a waste of time or not. So take it away, guys. You don't need college to learn, learn stuff, okay? Everything is available basically for free. Uh, you can learn anything you want for free. It is not a question of learning. I think colleges are basically for fun and to prove you can do your chores, but they're not for learning. There's not a school on earth, not a university or college that exists that isn't even remotely equipped to educate you properly in the world we live in today. Everything due to technology has become faster and more efficient, yet college takes longer and costs more. Why is that? Two reasons, very simple, greed and politics. You know, we ask uh, kids that are 16 to 18 years old to make $100,000 debt decisions when they go off to university. And they are not prepared for that. They don't know what they're getting themselves into. They just assume, okay, I'm going to pay four years of education at $25,000 a pop, and when I come out the other side, somehow I'll be able to pay it back. Right. That's not how life works anymore. It isn't necessary to pay thirty or $35,000 a year to go to some um, big name school to get the education at all. I, mean. I know there's a whole movement against college and one of the reasons there's a movement against college comes from people who've done extremely well either while they were in college and dropped out, Mark Zuckerberg, Mark Zuckerberg, um, or had good fortune and didn't need the college. And so they stand up and say, you don't need college, I didn't need college. Well, that's true. Some people don't need it, but there's more to college than simply the, the subjects that we learn. We're not saying that nobody should go to college. We're not saying that college is categorically a bad thing. We're not saying everybody should drop out. We're simply saying that too many people are going to college, just like too many people are buying housing and too many tech companies were going public in the late 90s. Uh, it doesn't mean there should be no tech companies or no houses. Um, it doesn't mean we should shut down all the colleges, but we need to make this a much more careful, deliberate choice. And what we are hoping to start with this discussion and debate today is a discussion that would encourage all of you to think more about your future. Do not think of education as something uh, that's an automatic ticket to the future. You need to think about it yourself. As someone who has actually gone through the process of university, done well for myself, not only in the system of schooling, but also in the system of life generally. And I'm still on that uphill path to the destination that I'd like to reach. But whilst on that particular path, I need to consider or make considerations around this particular subject. My kids are one day going to sit in front of me and ask me possibly, Dad, I want to go to university, but is it a waste of my time? And I need to be equipped well enough to answer that question. So there are numerous pieces of research articles that have been written by, stunningly enough, university graduates, university researchers, professors, doctors, and people with other forms of qualifications. Now, from this perspective, I want us to look at are universities just or merely a business and nothing else? What's the history of universities? Where do they come from? Why are they so important to us within society? What are the pros and cons of universities that 
advantages and disadvantages. What new perspectives can we formulate from all the information that we're going to present in this video, but also what is there to gain and how exactly must we look at the concept of universities moving forward. This from a dimension of a South African populace. You know, we've got a 40% graduate unemployment problem in this country. Those are graduates. Those are people with diplomas, people with higher certificates, people with degrees that do not have jobs. Whoa, relax, Peño. We're not there yet. Let's first start with the global statistics. So from a global view, there are more than 25,000 tertiary institutions, 25,000. And currently, there are 137 million degree holders. So that should tell you the importance of us actually discussing this particular subject. Worse still, over 300 million are estimated by 2030. That's only eight years from now. So in eight years time, it is estimated that the number of degree holders will most likely more than double, right? Half of that estimated 300 million will be attributed to the Asian markets, namely China and India. And of course that makes sense because they are after all the most densely populated countries. But come on, 300 million, that's quite a lot. In 2019-2020, there were approximately 2 million bachelor's degrees issued or conferred, with 58% being attributed or concentrated in six primary fields of study dominated by the business studies. Now, Peño, we can move to the South African stats. What were you saying again? I'm frustrated by the idea of our tertiary institutions that are not skills focused. You know, we've got a 40% graduate unemployment problem in this country. Those are graduates. Those are people with diplomas, people with higher certificates, people with degrees that do not have jobs. That tells me that the qualifications that are being peddled out there are not in line with what the economy needs. Number two, a lot of these qualifications are not capacitating kids to be able to build their own businesses and go on and become successful entrepreneurs that create jobs for other people. So that makes me very, very sad. And I'm just seeing universities in particular, but other tertiary institutions as money-making schemes. How much money can be sucked from government and if not from government and from some of these parents? Ordinary middle-class parents that are teachers, nurses, cops, traffic officers, just normal government administrators. That's actually something to not laugh at. It's quite serious what Peñol is raising, right? Worse still, South Africa boasts one of the lowest graduation rates in the world at 15%. It is important to note that as of June 2021, there were 1.7 million people in the country who held degrees. These degrees include bachelor's degrees, postgraduate diplomas, PhDs, masters, honors, you name them. And the country had seen an increase in the number of citizens with matric, which moved from 24.7% to 32.1% in 2020. Currently, a total of 1,093,353 students have been enrolled at public universities across the country, with UNISA having enrolled the most students at a total of 365,909. In other words, only 164 students graduated, graduated last year. And this is said to be a common trend that continues in the country because of that 15% that I mentioned earlier on. But ultimately, we can look at stats, we can look at numbers. What does this actually mean to that individual graduate that's watching this video now? Take it away, Matthew. Me, I graduated high school in 1988, got my college degree in 1993. And that college degree in 93 did not mean as much. It was not a ticket, it was not a voucher, it was not a free pass go to anything. So I asked the question, what does your college degree mean? It means you got an education. It means you have more knowledge in a specific subject, vocation. It means you may have more expertise in what your degree is in. But what's it worth? In the job market, out there today, we know the market for college graduates is more competitive now than ever. Now, some of you already have a job lined up. 
You've got a path where today's job is going to become tomorrow's career. But for most of you, the future is probably still pretty fuzzy. And you don't have that job that directly reflects the degree you just got. Many of you don't even have a job at all. Think about it, you've just completed your scholastic educational curriculum in life, the one that you started when you were five years old in kindergarten, up until now, and your future may not be any more clear than it was five years ago. You don't have the answers and it's probably pretty damn scary. And I say that's okay, because that is how it is. <laughs> this is the reality that many of you are facing. This is the world that we live in. According to Guinness World Records, the oldest recorded university stems from Morocco, Al Karonia. That's the name of the university, and it came forth 859 AD. Now, in the context of South Africa, the oldest university in South Africa is the University of Cape Town. But the School of Life, the YouTube channel, illustrates it best in terms of what was the original and intended motivated purpose of universities. Let's hear him out. What are universities really for? Well, the main thing is to teach people how to make a living, educating the young to be engineers, biochemists or economists. But there's another, stranger, bigger ambition lurking away there somewhere in the background. And it sometimes comes out during commencement addresses or at the lyrical moments of graduation ceremonies. And that's the idea that universities might teach us how to live. That is, that these might be places to go and study in order to work out what really matters, who we are, where our societies should be headed, and how we can be happier and more fulfilled. Not coincidentally, a great many universities were founded in the mid-19th century, at exactly the time when belief in religion was undergoing a severe, and in the eyes of many, alarming decline. At that time, a lot of questions were asked about where people were going to go and find meaning, consolation, wisdom and a sense of community, all the things they'd once found in a church. And to certain educationalists, there was one answer above all others. What people had once found in churches, they would now be able to discover in things like the dialogues of Plato, the plays of Shakespeare, the novels of Jane Austen, the paintings of Botticelli or Titian. In other words, in a secularizing age, culture would replace scripture. As you saw in the beginning, I graduated my master's degree. So the master's degree was in environmental health, which is a profession that I've been in for the past 12 years. I started with my undergraduate studies when I entered the University of Johannesburg. So I'm telling and narrating this part specifically to emphasize that I have nothing against universities themselves. I do feel, however, that the system itself could be improved. And that's the sole basis of this video. So that it's not just about the piece of paper. Like Dr. Motapo said the day I interviewed her on this channel, university may bring you out with a piece of paper, but ultimately it's what you actually do with that piece of paper that actually matters, right? So I completed my undergraduate degree in environmental health. It was a national diploma, actually, three years. When I entered the system, I entered as someone who wasn't sure what it is I was going to do with my life because I grew up being mathematically inclined, always in the top three, primary school, high school, top 15, always a top achiever, particularly in math and science, until I grew up, right, in high school, liked girls, entertained a lot of things that I shouldn't have been entertaining and therefore lost focus. Almost failed my grade 11 in the process. However, I picked myself up, passed matric enough to be able to get into a university because remember the system that you come from. You start, you study hard, get good grades, go to university, then after that, get a job. We get told this so frequently by our elders because when they attended university, that was mostly true. 30 years ago, if you were lucky enough to study at university, you were pretty much guaranteed a job in your field of study 
Engineering graduates would go on to work for a car or aircraft manufacturer. Media students could get a job at a broadcasting house and so on. Provided you got a decent grade, your future in a well-paid job was almost guaranteed. So that's the path that was guiding me and the direction that I was headed. And for me, it worked because it so happened that I was academically inclined. I almost didn't make it into the course of environmental health because initially I wanted to be a doctor. But due to my poor performance, unfortunately that in and of itself couldn't work because I didn't qualify to be a medical doctor. So still within the health fraternity, I chose environmental health, looking at the concepts of environmental health is preventative, being a doctor is curative. So my job would be to get people to not even go to the doctor in the first place. And that literally was a good calling for me. And so when I went to the university, spoke with the HOD, I didn't have a space because even though I had applied and put environmental health as my only option, my only course, unfortunately, I wasn't called for the interview. But having gone there in person and persisted, speaking to the HOD on numerous occasions, they gave me an opportunity an impromptu interview which I passed and then I made a promise to the HOD at the time, Mr. Shikwamban. I told him, because you've actually let me in, I am going to get a distinction in every single subject. So I put a goal forth. The goal is not just to complete the qualification, but to make sure I get a distinction in every single subject. So having entered in first year, I already was working towards that goal. Every single assessment, every single test, I would make sure that I perform to the best of my ability. First year, all modules distinctions. Second year, all module distinctions. Third year, the HOD left and there was a new HOD. But it just so happened that when I completed my third year, we'd actually meet the day I went to fetch my results. And lo and behold, I presented cum laude, everything distinctions. And that was literally a good start for me. I wasn't that involved on campus activities. I didn't have that many friends. I just had tunnel vision and a goal that I was working towards. So I graduated cum laude. I was a top student. In fact, the South African Institute of Environmental Health presented the, award for, the presidential award for best student nationally to myself. And that was something that was really good for me. So I went out as a top student, but guess what? I wasn't really guaranteed the best of what the world had to offer within the qualification that I was working in and within the career path that I was working towards. A students work for the B students, the C students run the businesses, and the D students dedicate the buildings. But fortunately, environmental health has this compulsory community service that you basically have to work for a year before you become an independent practitioner. So I worked at the OR Tambo International Airport as a port health officer doing community service for the year. At the end of the year, I then went to the city of Johannesburg. So I got my first official permanent post with the city of Johannesburg Environmental Health Unit. There, I stayed there for two years, then moved to the city of Ekuruleni. Then as time went over the years, got promoted. All this didn't come just by virtue of the qualification. It came by virtue of the qualification opening the door. Luck gets you in, hard work keeps, keeps you, you there. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. Then after it opened the door, it was for me to actually work towards being recognized in the profession. I got some awards within the profession at the city of Johannesburg, moved to the city of Ekurlen, was innovative in my approach. And then that also got me some recognition. I was hardworking, the work, the, the work ethic actually was always at the forefront of whatever it is I was presented to do and therefore that opened its own opportunities. Thereafter, I was able then to venture into business, opening an environmental health company, now dealing with YouTube where I can mentor, coach, and hone the particular and necessary skills. Public speaking being one of the key, key and fundamental skills that you can learn as an individual so that you can venture into any space and actually be able to work present yourself learn question ask for mentorship and actually seek opportunities that will matter in life so for me going to university 
was worth it. Going to university was not meaningless. Going to university was not a waste of time and money. Working hard in the university meant I also got bursaries that paid for everything that I needed, particularly in my second and third year. Ultimately, I did my bachelor's uh, degree or bachelor's of technology degree in environmental health. And then in 2020, I graduated my master's. But because of COVID, I only got to celebrate the graduation when the university allowed us post COVID-19. So for me, again, I say it was worth it. My journey, my story. What's your journey? What's your story? If you are interested in venturing, what type of story are you going to create as far as the university can afford you? It's not a one shoe fits all or one size fits all. You may see yourself not suitable for university. You may see yourself more suitable for entrepreneurship and so on. So the journey that you are going towards, focus on that, work on that, and then everything else. Through your actions, the opportunities will open up and you will do best and do better. So to say it's bad or it's good, or you should do it or you shouldn't, it's quite an ignorant thing to say because it really depends on the person. So let's stop judging people for what they choose to do with their life. You know, we need doctors, we need lawyers, we need people to go to university. What I think is, is a little bit immature is when people go to university to study drama and get into 40,000 pounds worth of student debt just because they don't know what to do. And they're like, oh, well, I don't know what to do. And it's like, come on, think. Think about what you want to do. Plan your life and then go make it happen. I must Seven six five five two go go get in the baba inside, but it's jungle.